Item number three is audience input regarding agenda items before the committee. We have none. Item number four is discussion of accounts payable. <coughs> Excuse me. A directive number 23-63. Uh, earlier this evening, we reviewed the following directives. Directive number 23-63 and the amount of $1,000. $1,245.73, Directive 23-64, in the amount of $512,517.27, Directive 23-65, in the amount of $221,872.37, and the gross payroll for February, $2,765,000. $935.92. Motion. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Anyone opposed? Motion carries. <coughs> Excuse me. Item number five is consideration of a resolution authorizing a change of signatories on the Illinois Metropolitan Investment Fund account. Make the motion. Second. Thank you. Kathleen. Thank you, Madam Chair. The attached resolution allows for a change in the signatories on the Illinois Metropolitan Investment Fund account. Um, specifically, this will remove the previous finance and assistant finance director and replace it with the current finance and assistant finance director. We request your approval at this time. Thank you. I have no questions on this item. Any questions from the committee? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Motion carries. Item number six is consideration of a resolution authorizing the update of IMET participant bank instructions. Make the motion. Second. Thank you. Colleen. So this resolution allows for the update of bank instructions on the Illinois Metropolitan Investment Fund account. Specifically, this will remove the previous bank account on file to the current bank, which is Addison Bank and Trust, um, for transfers from the IMED account to Addison Bank and Trust. This also allows for the finance director to authorize and execute this change. Request your approval at this time. Okay, I have no questions on this item. Any questions from the committee? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Motion carries. Item number seven is consideration to accept the garbage waste hauling fees for the village of Addison, effective April 1st, 2023. Make the motion. Second. Thank you. Colleen. So tonight at the village board um, has on the agenda the contract with Republic Waste for waste hauling. Attached is a copy of attachment B to the contract that states the rates for residential, commercial, and industrial. Effective April 1st, 2023, there will be a 2% increase in the residential rates. For single family residents, this translates to an increase of a dollar per billing cycle and 50 cents per billing cycle for seniors. The townhome residents will see an increase of 88 cents per billing cycle and 44%, 44 cents per billing cycle for seniors. The multifamily residents will see an increase of 88 cents per billing cycle. At the meeting on February 6th, 2023, the Village Board approved a one-year extension for branch pickup services from MDL Tree Services, not to exceed $91,200. This was a 0% increase from the prior year and therefore will not have an impact on resident bills. The single family resident rate will continue at $2.44 per billing cycle and the senior rate will continue at $1.22 per billing cycle. These rates will be effective April 1st, 2023, and first appear on the April 21st, 2023 billing. The attached spreadsheet indicates the old rates and the new rates, including branch pickup fees. I have also included a summary of the garbage rates since 2010. We ask for your acceptance of the rate changes. Thank you. I have no questions on this item. Any questions from the committee? Sam? I just want to take this opportunity to commend the staff and everyone else involved on negotiations with the vendor and to keep expenses to a minimum. And I'm sure the residents appreciate that, and I do as well. Thank you. 
Thanks, Sam. Any other comments, questions? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Motion carries. Item number eight is consideration of an ordinance amending the Edison budget document and appropriation ordinance for the 2022-2023 fiscal year. Make the motion. Second. Thank you. Colleen. Okay. So as mentioned, this is the amendment to the budget document and the appropriation ordinance that was passed in July. The appropriation ordinance is the legal spending limit for the village by fund. During the course of the year, we make changes to the expenditures, which in turn exceeded the amounts appropriated in July. The attached, ex the attached exhibit shows expenditures, expenditure line items, which are anticipated to be in excess of the original appropriation, and which in total are anticipated to exceed the appropriation for that fund. As a reminder, we need to make sure that the legal spending limit of the budget is sufficient to cover any unexpected costs during occurring before year end. These numbers will be higher than expected. They're gonna be higher than we expect the year end to actually come in at. These adjustments have no actual effect on our fund balance results at year end. In all cases, sufficient revenue or projected fund balances are available to, reco to cover these expenses, these requested increases, excuse me. The, increase, um, by, the increases by fund are the general fund, we're looking at $2,128,300. For internal service funds, $789,300. Capital projects, $626,800. And police pension, $234,400. For total operating funds of $3,778,800. In addition, we have appropriation increases for various grant funds that are not budgeted for in the amount of $418,300. So the total amendment is $4,197,100. We ask for your approval at this time. Uh, any questions from the committee? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, Colleen. Item number nine is consideration of a payment to Service Master Cleaning and Restoration Pro in the amount of $98,603.13 for the water damage remediation and repairs from the December 24th, 2022 sprinkler head failure. Funding in account number 100.1060-4180. Make the motion. Second. Thank you. Jim. Thank you, Madam Chair. On December 24th, 2022, Village Hall sustained substantial damage to the boardroom and the community development area downstairs due to a failure in the sprinkler system. We had one sprinkler head right outside the boardroom here that uh, burst due to the extreme cold temperatures. Um, it caused a lot of damage. We're still in the process. Uh, last thing to go is the carpet here, which will come up later. Um, Service master was contacted immediately that night to help with the water remediation and the, subst the sub substantial repairs that would be needed after the fact. Due to the nature of the emergency, we didn't seek quotes for this and chose service master because of our past history with them. We've used them a number of times for similar work. Staff has inspected the work that they provided. We are very satisfied. Funding has been provided in the general fund account 100.1060-4180. With your concurrence, we respectfully request your approval on issuing payment to Service Master Cleaning and Restoration Pro in the amount of $98,603.13. Thank you. I have no questions on this item. Any questions from the committee? Mm -hmm. um, and since since that time, we've made some improvements, so this type of thing shouldn't happen in the future, correct? Shouldn't happen in the future. That's great. <laughs> any, uh, any other questions from the committee? <coughs> Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Motion carries. Item number 10, consideration to waive the formal bid process and accept the proposal from Consolidated Flooring of Addison, Illinois for carpet installation services in the boardroom, child's room, and southwest first floor hallway of the Village Hall 
in the amount of $31,408.46. Funding and account number 100.1060-4180. Make the motion. Second. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, due, to the, due to the damage that was created by the sprinkler head, uh, all, all of this carpet had to be pulled up. It was the fourth time, third time that it took water. Um, we did not want any future issues to arise from wet carpeting. So it was all pulled up. Uh, we, so, we solicited proposals from a number of contractors with only two local contractors responding. Consolidated Flooring of Addison was chosen to be the lowest, most responsible contractor. We've used them in the past and have been very satisfied with the quality of their work. Due to the timing and the nature of the damage created by this failure, we are requesting that the formal bid process be waived and that the proposal issued by Consolidated Flooring in the amount of $31,408.46 be accepted and approved. Thank you. I have no questions. It'll be nice to have carpeting again. Yeah, Any you. questions from the committee? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, Jim. Thank you. Item number 11 is consideration to accept the proposal of a one-year contract extension of bid number 22-3-1 to Uno Mas Landscaping of Elgin, Illinois for parkway restorations in the unit pricing of $7.95 per square yard in a not to exceed cost of $22,000. Funding in account number 500.5010-4180, 500.5031-4180, and 100.2510-4180. Make the motion. Second. Thank you. Rick. Good evening, Madam Chair and members of the committee. Uh, this item for your consideration uh, is to uh, have a one-year contract extension with Uno Mas. They were awarded the bid last year, and this is for all parkway restorations from work performed primarily by our water and sewer departments for repairs, uh, water main breaks, and, and such uh, in, within the parkway, also some tree removals. So any work done in the late fall and over this past winter now is ready for restoration. Uh, we had no issues with Uno Mas. They did a, a very good job last year. Uh, with the contract, and as you had stated, uh, $7.95 per square yard is a zero increase uh, from last year. So we're recommending approval of a one-year contract extension. Very good. I have no questions on this item. Any questions from the committee? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Motion carries. Item number 12 is consideration to approve the proposal from Excel Limited Inc. of Grays Lake, Illinois for the purchase of streetlight control cabinets and the not to exceed amount of $47,989. Funding and account number 100.2510-4180. Made the motion. Second. Thank you, Rick. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, this item for your consideration is the purchase of eight uh, cabinets for our street light system. Uh, we've had a multi-year project replacing some of our older cabinets throughout town. Uh, when we originally started the program back in 2018, we bid, however, there were no responses. Uh, so through a series of requests for quotes, uh, we selected Excel uh, to make that, those that first batch of cabinets, and we have used them every year since. Um, we've been very happy with the product. Uh, this year, again, they will be making eight new cabinets. Uh, the total price increase uh, compared to last year's eight cabinets is an increase of only $41 uh, total. Um, so we'd like to keep with the same uh, company because it does help with having interchangeable parts, training employees, repairs and troubleshooting and things like that. So having, having them all be uniform throughout town is also uh, an advantage to the village through one company. We will do the installation. So upon receipt of these as they're, as they're fabricated throughout uh, the coming months, then we will install those later this year. Uh, so we're seeking your approval then for this proposal for the eight cabinets and a not to exceed amount of $47,989. Thank you. About, I, I think we might have talked about this before, but about how long do these cabinets last, Rick? Well, we're replacing the oldest, which would have started back probably in the 50s, uh, some of the older cabinets. So that's how, you know, they've lasted pretty well. They're the old police style boxes with the doors. And so gradually again, we're replacing them with, with newer cabinets. Um, these we expect to last longer. They're aluminum and stainless parts. So we're hoping uh, that they, 
that they last even longer, but those original ones did hold out for a long time. That's great. Any questions from the committee? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Anyone opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Item number 13 is consideration to approve change order number one for the purchase of an aerial lift, truck body, and supplemental equipment from Custom Truck One Source of Forest, Virginia through Sourcewell, a joint bid cooperative in the amount of $12,425, funding an account number 640.9964-4346. Make a motion. Second. Right. Thank you again, Madam Chair. This uh, change order came about through a purchase of a vehicle of a bucket truck for our forestry department. It was actually ordered back in 2019, I'm sorry, excuse me, 2021. Um, it is ready for delivery. However, because of the long lag and as we've seen with other purchases of vehicles and equipment, uh, there is an increase over the original price. So in that year and a half during production and, and assembly of the vehicle, uh, the change order put forth by the company for $12,425 constitutes about a 7, 8% increase from the original price over the year and a half. Um, we did speak with Sourcewell. We always have them. Um, um, we, we discuss with them any changes because our, these were purchased through a national bid contract. Uh, and they said this is in line with the increases they've seen for vehicles uh, and equipment. Uh, of this nature. Um, so we're requesting the change order. As I mentioned, the, the increase in price would be $12,425. So the total price for the equipment and the chassis and truck uh, will now be $173,755 and recommending that price for payout. Thank you. Got difficulty with getting things timely these days. Any questions from the committee? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Anyone opposed? Motion carries. Item number 14 is consideration of approval to purchase a dump body and plowing components for a Ford F550 from Henderson Products of Huntley, Illinois, through Sourcewell, a joint bid cooperative, and the total amount of $59,394, funding an account number 640.9964-4347. Make the motion. Second. Thank you. Rick. Thank you, Madam Chair. As part of our budgeted equipment replacement program for this fiscal year, uh, a truck, a Ford F-550, was ordered uh, uh, at the end of last year. Um, we are getting ready now to, to provide all the upfitting for the plow, for the dump body, and all the other accessories for the truck. So those components will be put on by Henderson. Uh, this purchase is also through Sourcewell, through the national bid process. Um, so this part for the upfitting of this vehicle is $59,394. Um, I will note we do always estimate the cost of the vehicles in advance of each budget year. Um, so this one did come in over. However, there are sufficient funds in the equipment replacement fund uh, to cover that. It was mostly for the increase in the price of the vehicle. They redid the Ford F-550s last year during the time we were purchasing. Um, so requesting approval at this time for this purchase, Sourcewell through Henderson. Thank you. I have no questions on this item. Any questions from the committee? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Anyone opposed? Motion carries. Item number 15 is consideration to approve payment number nine to Core and Main LP of St. Louis, Missouri for the water meter and AMR AMI project in the amount of $422,821.70, bid number 21-1-3, Funding and account number 500.5010-4519. Make the motion. Second. Rick. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, this request is for payment number nine for the ongoing water meter replacement program and water meter reader system uh, throughout the village. This is payment number nine to Corin, Maine. Uh, this is for an additional meters that were shipped and AMRs uh, to the village. And then the installation of 822 more additional pairs of units at our residents and businesses. Uh, all work has been checked and approved by our staff. We've received waivers of lien and certified payroll uh, for this payout. So we're requesting payment at this time in the amount of $422,821.70. Thank you. I have no questions on this item. Any questions from the committee? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, Rick. Thank you. Item number 16 is audience participation. 
We have none. Executive session, we don't need one. Other business, I have none. Motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. We are adjourned.
Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to call the regular village board meeting for Monday, March 6th to order. Would the clerk please call the roll? Trustees Del Rosario. Here. Pundley. Here. Klusny. Here. Lynch. Here. Nosty. Here. O'Brien. Here. And Mayor Veenstra. Here. Would everyone please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. If you please remain standing for the invocation, this evening is going to be given by Pastor Antonio Cabello of Prince of Peace. A reading comes from the Psalm 16. Keep me say, my God, for in you I take refuge. I say to the Lord, you are my Lord. Apart from you, I have no good thing. O Lord, grant that in our joy and our struggles, we may find you a refuge. As our minds are set in the well-being of our community, May that many pressures of our offices may never take away the solace of your presence. O oh God, be with parents, students, teachers, and administrators of our school district. Give them wisdom to guide and the servant heart to follow. O oh Lord, be with our healthcare workers, fire department, and police department, as they deal with the best situations and the difficult ones. O oh Lord, be with our business community, with entrepreneurs, administrators, bankers, cashiers, line workers, grocery store employees, employees in the warehouse and distribution centers. Bless their families and the fruit of their labors. May you be with our elected officials as they look and dream for the common good. May their personal life be blessed with close family and good friends. And may we bless, you bless the United States of America and this town of Addison. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. Item number four is the approval of the minutes of the February 21st regular village board meeting. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Motion and second to approve discussion. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. The minutes stand approved. Item five, proclamations, appointments, and presentations. We have none this evening. Item six is audience input regarding agenda items before the board. We have none this evening. Item seven is the consent agenda. 7A is approval of accounts payable. Earlier this evening, the committee recommended approval of the following directives. Directive 23-63 and the amount of $1,245.73. Directive 23-64 and the amount of $512,517.27. Directive number 23-65 in the amount of $221,872.37. Gross payroll for February was $2,765,935.92. Thank you. 7B is acceptance of the garbage waste hauling fees for the Village of Addison, effective April 1st, 2023. Item 7C is the approval of payment to Service Master Cleaning and Restoration Pro in the amount of $98,603.13 for the water damage remediation and repairs from the December 24th sprinkler head failure. Item 7D is approval to waive the formal bid process and accept the proposal from Consolidated Flooring of Addison for carpet installation services in the boardroom child's room and southwest first floor hallway of the village hall in the amount of $31,408.46. 70's approval of a proposal of a one-year contract extension of bid 22-3-1 to Uno Mas Landscaping of Elgin for parkway restoration in the unit price of $7.95 per square yard in the not to exceed cost of $22,000. 7F is approval 
of a proposal from, oops, let me get back here. Yeah, I just lost it in there. Approval of a proposal from Excel Limited Incorporated of Grays Lake for the proposal of uh, purchase of street light control cabinets in a not to exceed amount of $47,989. 7G is approval of change order number one for the purchase of an aerial lift truck body and supplemental equipment from custom trucks, one source of Forest uh, Virginia through Sourcewell a joint bid cooperative in the amount of $12,425. 7-H is the approval to purchase a dump body and plowing components for a Ford F-550 from Henderson Products of Huntley through Sourcewell, a joint bid cooperative in the total amount of $59,394. 7-I is the approval of payment number nine to Corin Main LP of St. Louis, Missouri for the water meter and AMR AMI project in the amount of $422,821.70. Is there a motion to approve the consent agenda? So moved. Second. Motion and a second to approve. Discussion? Roll call, please. Trustees Del Rosario? Yes. Hundley? Yes. Kluzny? Yes. Lynch? Yes. Nosty? Yes. And O'Brien? Yes. The consent agenda is approved. Item eight, ordinances and resolutions. 8A is the second reading of an ordinance amending chapter <coughs> three of the village code to decrease the number of class DB liquor licenses for Lorena's Banquets Incorporated doing business at Lorena's Banquets at 543 West Lake Street. At our meeting on February 21st, the committee reviewed this ordinance which amends chapter three of the village code to decrease the number of Class DB liquor licenses for Lorena's Banquets, Inc., doing business as Lorena's Banquets at 543 West Lake Street. The committee recommended approval and first reading was given at the February 21st Village Board meeting. Second, me second reading is requested. This is second reading of an ordinance amending Chapter 3 of the Village Code to decrease the number of Class DB liquor licenses for Lorena's Banquets Incorporated doing business as Lorena's Banquets at 543 West Lake Street. Motion to adopt the ordinance. Second. Motion and a second to adopt the ordinance. Discussion? Roll call. Trustees Del Rosario? Yes. Huntley? Yes. Kluzny? Yes. Lynch? Yes. Nosty? Yes. And O'Brien. Yes. The ordinance is approved. 8B is the second reading of an ordinance amending Chapter 3 of the Village Code to increase the number of Class DB liquor licenses for JPP 543 Incorporated doing business as Lorena's Banquets at 543 West Lake Street. At our meeting on February 21st, the committee reviewed this ordinance, which amends Chapter 3 of the Village Code to increase the number of Class DB liquor licenses for JPP 543 Inc. doing business as Lorena's Banquets at 540, 543 West Lake Street. The committee recommended approval and free, first reading was given at the February 21st Village Board meeting. Second reading is requested. This is second reading of an ordinance amending Chapter 3 of the Village Code to increase the number of Class DB liquor licenses for JPP 543 Incorporated doing business as Lorena's Banquets at 543 West Lake Street. Motion to adopt the ordinance. Second. Motion and second to adopt the ordinance. Discussion? Roll call. Trustees Del Rosario? Yes. Hundley? Yes. Kluzny? Yes. Lynch? Yes. Nosty? Yes. And O'Brien? Yes. The ordinance is approved. 8C is the second reading of an ordinance amending Chapter 3 of the Village Code to increase the number of Class D liquor licenses for Lake Street Cafe Incorporated doing business as Lake Street Cafe at 501 East Lake Street. At our meeting on February 21st, the committee reviewed this ordinance, which amends Chapter 3 of the Village Code to increase the number of Class D liquor licenses for Lake Street Cafe Inc doing business as Lake Street Cafe at 501 East Lake Street. The committee recommended approval and first reading was given at the February 21st Village Board meeting. Second reading is requested. This is second reading of an ordinance amending Chapter 3 of the Village Code to increase the number of Class D liquor licenses for Lake Street Cafe Incorporated doing business as Lake Street Cafe at 501 East Lake Street. Motion to adopt the ordinance. Second. Motion and second to adapt. Discussion? Roll call. 
Trustees Del Rosario? Yes. Hundley? Yes. Klusney? Yes. Lynch? Yes. Nosti? Yes. And O'Brien? Yes. The ordinance is approved. 8D is the second reading of an ordinance approving the Solid Waste Collection and Disposal Service Agreement with Allied Waste Services of North America, LLC, doing business as Republic Service of Melrose Park. At our meeting on February 21st, the committee reviewed this ordinance, which approves the Solid Waste Collection and Disposal Services Agreement with Allied Waste Services of North America, LLC, doing business as Republic Services of Melrose Park. The committee recommended approval, and first reading was given at the February 21st Village Board meeting. Second reading is requested. This is second reading of an ordinance approving the Solid Waste Collection and Disposal Services Agreement with Allied Waste Services of North America, LLC, doing business as Republic Services of Melrose Park. Motion to adopt the ordinance. Second. Motion and a second to adapt the ordinance. Discussion? Roll call. Trustees Del Rosario? Yes. Fundley? Yes. Klusny? Yes. Lynch? Yes. Nosti? Yes. And O'Brien? Yes. The ordinance is approved. Item 8E is the first ring of an ordinance amending the Addison Budget Document and Appropriation Ordinance for the 2022-2023 fiscal year. At our meeting earlier this evening, the committee reviewed this ordinance, which amends the Addison Budget Document and Appropriation Ordinance for the 2022-2023 fiscal year. The committee recommended approval and first reading is requested. This is first reading of an ordinance amending the Addison budget document and appropriation ordinance for the 2022-2023 fiscal year. First reading. First reading only. Item 8F is the consideration of a resolution authorizing a change of signatories on the Illinois Metropolitan Investment Fund IMET account. At our meeting earlier this evening, the committee reviewed this resolution which authorizes a change of signatories on the Illinois Metropolitan Investment Fund account. The committee recommended approval and the attorney is asked to read the resolution. This is consideration of a resolution authorizing a change of signatories on the Illinois Metropolitan Investment Fund account. Motion to adopt the resolution. Second. There's been a motion and a second to adapt the resolution. Discussion? Roll call. Trustees Del Rosario? Yes. Hundley? Yes. Klusny? Yes. Lynch? Yes. Nosti? Yes. And O'Brien? Yes. The resolution is approved. AG is consideration of a resolution authorizing the update of IMET participant bank instructions. At our meeting earlier this evening, the committee reviewed this resolution, which authorizes the update of IMET participant bank instructions. The committee recommended approval, and the attorney is asked to read the resolution. This is consideration of a resolution authorizing the update of IMET participant bank instructions. Motion to adopt the resolution. Second. Motion and second to adopt the resolution. Discussion? Roll call. Trustees Hundley? Yes. Del Rosario? Yes. Klusny? Yes. Lynch? Yes. Nosti? Yes. And O'Brien? Yes. The resolution is approved. Item 9 is Mayor's report. I have no report this evening. Item 10 is officer's report, village attorney. I have nothing tonight, thank you, Mayor. Thank you, village manager. No report tonight, Mayor, thank you. Village clerk. I have a lot of things that are going to be happening here in Addison. Um, <coughs> expressions, art and verse, uh, will be at the Addison Center for Arts now through March 13th, excuse me, March 18th. Uh, Women in History on Thursday, March 16th at 7 p.m., co-sponsored by the Addison Historical Society and the Addison Public Library. And then early voting um, will begin for the uh, April 4th consolidated election that will begin on March 20th and go until April 3rd at the Addison Township offices at 401 North Addison Road. Uh, this will take place on Monday to from Monday to Friday from 8.30 a.m. until 7 p.m. and then Saturday and Sunday from 9 a.m. until 5 p.m. Uh, then we have the spring recycling extravaganza on Saturday, March 25th from 8 a.m. until noon at Addison Trail High School. This is for Addison residents only and uh, there will be free tree saplings available while supplies last that morning. Uh, then the Secretary of State's office mobile unit will be at the Addison Township offices, uh, again at 401 North Addison Road on Thursday, April 6th from 10 a.m. until 2 p.m. And 
that's all I have. Thank you. Welcome back. Thank you. So, item 11 is commission and board reports. We have no reports this evening. 12 is executive session. We do not need any. Uh, and 13 is audience participation. I understand you're all here for one issue. Uh, yeah. Yes. So you're going to have one person speak for you. Uh, I think a couple of us were going to speak. As long as long as you have different information, that'll be fine. Okay. okay. Good evening. I need your name. Good. And thanks for uh, thanks for having us. We'll need um, your name and the address, please. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, Brian Gagliano. Our address is 1431 Byron in Addison. Uh, the reason that we're here today is to request the lift of the short-term rental um, ban that I understand has been put on the village of Addison. Um, just wanted to talk real fast um, as far as the rentals, sorry, I'm not good in front of a group. <laughs> um, as far as the uh, short-term rentals go, we vet our guests very well. Um, we're actually super hosts along with uh, all the folks that are here, which means that we only let people into our homes that we want to have in our homes. We've invested a lot of money and a lot of time and a lot of furnishing to make sure that everything is proper. Uh, the folks that come into town, there is a tax revenue um, for the village, whether it's from the shopping to the restaurants to the taxes that we do pay. Um, Oh yeah, of course our guests are safe. Because <laughs> um, once again, we wouldn't let anybody just into our house. We vet our guests extremely, extremely well. Um, we were all put through, when we got our rental licenses, all put through the crime, um, crime, the crime housing, training. Yeah. yeah, the crime yeah. training that we have to abide by. I've personally had four or five different houses in Addison that I did as regular rentals. Um, and if you look back on, I mean, my personal record, you could see that there was never any kind of issues or anything like that. Um, I'm just asking for different ideas, I'm sorry. There's so many different positive things that, that this can all bring to the community. There's just normal families that need to travel. And sometimes it's hard to travel with two or three kids and be able to stay in a Holiday Inn or something like that because there's, I'm sure you guys possibly have kids and have traveled before, um, but it's easier to stay at somebody's house. Anytime that me and my wife and our friends and whatever and kids go, we usually stay at an Airbnb just because it's more family orientated. You know, you sit out in the backyard, watch TV on the, watch a movie on the TV or what, whatever the case may be. So um, we are fully booked for the summertime. Um, our particular house, along with some of the other guests, are beautiful vacation homes. And I was just told about this last week, I believe it was, that there's going to be a ban that's going to be happening very soon, like in the end of the month, if I'm not mistaken. So. I just want you guys to maybe rethink it. There's not many of us. I think a total of, seven. I think there's about seven total short-term rentals here in town um, out of all of the rentals that, you know, I'm, uh, and I'm sure there's many other regular rentals. Um, so, Oh yeah, uh, the, we've never had it. We've already had people stay at our places. Never had any complaints. Never had any, anything. We actually were, like I said, what's called a super host. We actually have other properties in different towns that we're doing the same thing with, and we're super host because we want good people. <laughs> and they're all fight right. So when you vet somebody, that means that they'll, what we do is we vet somebody. We actually have a program where we could find out who they are, what they are. And they have five servers, you can bring your other room. And then, that's all we allow. right, so when you stay at, when you stay at a short-term rental, everybody is, uh, has stars. 
right? Three star, four star, five star, whatever the case may be. We personally, and I'm sure that the other folks do, because you don't want to mess with bad people, <laughs> but everybody has to be a five star review with a certain amount of reviews, right? So if it's, they have to have a minimum of let's say four star, um, four five star reviews in order for us to even consider them going to stay with us. Right, they're not like party people. It, it, a lot of this stuff is all people have in their heads. Oh, we're gonna go rent a mansion and we're gonna party, you know. No parties allowed. It's no parties allowed. Only the guests, only the, ho only the guests that are, have to, be have to be listed on as a, um, as a guest. Mm -hmm. Other than that, you're not allowed. And we have ring cameras and whatnot where we can see who's coming into the place and what's going on also, just so you, you know, just so you know. I apologize if I'm stuttering. No, that's fine. <laughs> it's kind of my first time. You got all have suits on, so you scare me. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm sure, I'm, 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 I'm guessing that one of you guys or maybe some of you people have stayed at a short-term rental with family, friends. Most of the people are, you know, families coming in for weddings, coming in for, God forbid, funerals, uh, coming in for, you know, just vacation. You know, just vacation. So, um, you know, the town has a ton to offer. So it's a great, it's a great way to get other people in here that aren't necessarily familiar with Addison, right? We know Chicago, but did you know that you're 10 minutes away from the airport? You know, did you know that the theater is walking distance? And you know that Addison has Starbucks and restaurants and bars and all this other kind of cool stuff. There's also a golf tournament. And, and I was gonna say, and they have the golf, they have, they have I mean, it's, it's a great town. It's a great town to go to a vacation. Yeah, it really is. But nobody knows it. I didn't know that, <laughs> so. but it's awesome. <laughs> Joe or Mike, do you wanna address the genesis of this and uh, where we are? Sure, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you for coming and thank you for bringing this to our attention. Yep. Uh, this ordinance did get approved in October and was effective January 1st, so it's actually in effect now. And as you indicated, you know, we do have a rental program. We've had a rental program for some time. Um, we have a very large rental program. We have about 1,200 rental properties and about 4,500 rental units that we know of. So it's subject, as you know, to the rental program, uh, the crime-free housing and you know, the training and, and inspections and things of that nature. Over the years, we've, we've never really controlled these basically because we weren't aware of them. Uh, we became aware of them by complaints. Some of the, the you know, neighbors and, or residents in the neighborhood have complained. They don't know who the neighbor is next to them. People are coming and going sometimes. And again, I know there's, to your point, there's probably very good people that come to town and, and rent these, these homes. But on the flip side, we've had some major problems with them where um, there's parties, there's loud music, uh, people are coming and going. I think there's been drug deals. Um, I think we've had uh, crime at some of these homes before too, maybe guns being brought. So there's really a concern from a lot of the residents in the community that's really brought it to staff's attention, um, as well as the police department. The police department you know, uh, updates uh, the board updates the other departments, community development on these types of incidents. So this was something that we felt was important to some regulate, and uh, we still require rental license for any rental property that's 30 days or more, uh, but they would put the stop at 30, or less than 30, I should say. Okay. Um, is, it, is it a consideration of a regulation, regulation of there's always there might be one bad apple in a bunch of seven short-term rental people right just like there's one bad apple anywhere unfortunately is it I'm sorry if somebody yeah. else can chime in just to get there just to help help get all the different points sure. available is that cool my name is Sayyid Thakbi sir hold on a second hold on a second the other gentleman is still speaking. You can't just oh, walk no, no, up no. and yeah, interrupt yeah, him. No, 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 it's okay. No, yeah, no it's fine. Me too, you know. Yeah, no, I don't. Oh, okay, yeah. but we have to do this one at a time because okay. Okay, the clerk up. has to I'll take down up. the minutes so oh, we know who's talking and what they're talking about. So I if just slow down a little bit, it'll be a lot easier to understand who's talking and what they're gotcha. saying. Okay, apologies. Um, I think 
what I was getting at is, let's say that you see that you know Brian Gagliano and Taylor are awesome. They got their super host status. They they vet their people really well. Haven't had a situation on from a short-term rental to a long-term rental, which we've done before, which we have. <laughs> um, is it is it a like case by case kind of basis? You know what I mean? Like, oh, you're fired from, you know, the short-term rentals because you're not good at it. You know, with you, you know what I mean. With with all the complaints we received, uh, I'm sure you've read things in the newspapers. There's been other communities that have experienced crime from these types of things, where these properties are being rented out, and you know, kids are renting them, and there's parties, and there's guns, and there's drugs, and there's alcohol, and um, you know it. Things like this have made the paper. It's been a concern of staff. It's been a concern of the residents, and it's been a concern of the village board as well. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm, thank you for yeah, your thank you. time. Appreciate it. My name is Sayyid Takbi, and I had a long-term tenant, and she was there 10 months. Excuse me. Excuse me, Shaq. We need your address as well, please. Uh, 1376 North Clover Court. So I had a long-term tenant, and it took me 10 months to evict her. Uh, she didn't pay me rent. I lost $40,000. Um, and she was throwing all kind of parties. But now short-term tenant, you know, I never had any problem. I have two houses here uh, for renting, and I live in one, so I have three houses. We never had any issues with short-term tenant. We make sure we actually check the ID before they come in. Uh, we, you know, because we are more concerned about ourselves than you guys are, because we don't want to damage our property. We don't want to have bad people coming in. So we never have any problem with uh, any neighbors. And at least you should allow grandfather, you know, the people who are already have, you know, at least people who are here, uh, grandfather them, uh, you know, maybe we, you know, in the future you, you can stop that, but at least consider us uh, as a grandfather. That's all. Okay, anyone else would? Yes. Yeah. My name is Amy Ngo. I live at uh, 857 Kings Point Drive West. I also have a small successful business in town. Um, I'm. I'm aware that your concern of short-term rental might bring in crimes, but is there any data that's saying that short-term rental is more dangerous than long-term rental? Um, if, you, if you say it's hard to regulate, then give us some regulation, make rules. Um, I do uh, wear you know, a two-night minimum bookings only, and um, you cannot book automatic book if you don't have good ratings. I'm more concerned of who I let in my house than my neighbors, you know, because I don't want people to come in, damage my house, to party, and because I'm the one that's going to pay for the damage. And I did the short-term rental since last July. I haven't had any problems. I also told my neighbor that this is what I'm doing. I gave my neighbor my information. If he have any problem, he called me. And one time there was loud noise and he called me and I contact the guests that stay in there and they cooperate. So um, there's also a long-term rental behind the jewel and they're shooting every other month. Um, so I don't think there's like, you know, like short-term rental is more dangerous than long-term <coughs> rental, you know? If you wanna ma make it like a minimum three nights booking, anything, we can co cooperate. I mean, the world is evolving. We have to, you know, evolve with the words and there's a market for it. Make room for us. If there's like 1,200 home in housing in Edison, then just give us the 1%. That's all I'm asking for. Thank you. Thank you. Any other? Yeah. I'm sorry, what would you repeat? Okay. 
I will ask the people that spoke, would you please sign in in the back of the room so we, we make certain that we have the correct spelling, et cetera. Okay, Thank you. I say, ask something too. So how are we gonna do with like, we d I just found out this information since I had a, uh, an appointment with the village to come to the house to do the annual check-in, and that's when he informed me that the short-term rental was banned last October. And now I already have booking in August, so how do you suppose I would handle that? Mike, how was the notif uh, notification given? Well, I mean, I know, Syed, you, you came in and talked to us. Um, what we did, because he already was in our rental program, we didn't know that he was renting short term. But before, we actually, before we even had the ordinance, we worked out an agreement that he can continue on for the rest of his bookings that he had booked. But after that, he would have to stop. So, uh, But I don't know if we want to extend that across the board to anybody who has bookings. I think we have to stop. Yeah. And, I mean, there's other other towns that do short-term rental, and they're successful at this. Maybe we can learn a few things from them too. The other towns have their own business. Uh, you know, we have to do what's best for our community. What we will do is discuss what options we can come up with to address the issue of current rentals that you've got booked, and uh, you know, see how we can handle that. Uh, but that's probably as far as we're going to be able to go. Okay, so, thank you. Yeah. All right, uh, any other comments, input? I have one question. You said seven, is that seven Host. hosts? Host. Seven homes? Yeah. Okay. yeah, I think we're aware that there's significantly more than seven homes doing this. I would, I, See, you know, unfortunately, you know, some people do a great job and do it by the book, which obviously you're doing, but unfortunately there's a large number that try to cut corners and don't really care about the village and what impact it has. And that's what we're seeing as a major issue right now. So, uh, you know, we'll try to work with you in terms of your current bookings, but uh, going forward, Further, we'll continue to monitor and see what uh, you know changes, if any, there are, and uh, address at that point. Okay. So, all right. If there's no further uh, input, is there a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Second. Motion is second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. We are adjourned.